Hello buddy, welcome back to another video. I'm Corporal from Gaming here and today I'm playing some more Bloom's Adventure Time Tower Defense. So today uh, I'm doing a bit of a quick guide here on character upgrades. Woo. Uh, so over the years, I guess, of this channel, people have asked me this question a lot. How do you upgrade characters? What's the best way to upgrade characters? How are your characters such high levels? And other questions very similar to that. Uh, and I think I've talked about it in a few more general guides, but I've never done a specific guide on character upgrades, at least not to my knowledge. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I'm doing today, just a quick guide on character upgrades. So I'm going to go over uh, all the different ways you can get character upgrades, uh, what I believe to be the best ways, and just some general other tips about how you want to level up your characters, potentially order stuff like that. Uh, so first thing, obviously, this is a big one. This is kind of how the game tells you to do it. The Bloom Beacon. So, uh, I believe once you beat in your first couple maps and the tutorial, you get access to the Bloom Beacon. It'll pop up on a random map. Uh, it lets you redo difficulties you've already beaten to get a reward. In this case, I got very lucky here. It's Cosmic Essence. Uh, it can be any character item, including Cosmic Essence, which I will talk about later, because that's definitely important in a character guide video. Um, but yeah, so it can be anything. You get one for normal, two for hard, three for extreme, four for impossible. So obviously, it's better when you have stronger units and you can take on a pot ball on every map, but you won't always be able to do that. That's obviously a fact. You can't always be in a pot ball, especially earlier on in the game. Uh, but even early on, just getting one or two character items is pretty helpful, as if you do beat it, you often are given the chance, if you're playing on mobile, to watch an ad to double the rewards, which is very helpful if you are doing a pot ball and you're getting like four cosmic essence. Getting eight is much better and obviously much faster. Uh, the Bloom Beacon does have, like, I believe a two or three hour cooldown, so it's not the greatest method by any means, but it's a solid one. It's a nice one to do in combination with the next thing I'm going to talk about, quests. Quests are just incredible in this game. They get overlooked by a lot of players. They are some of the most useful things in the game, because when you select a quest, you have four, four options. I have three options. There's four different tiers. Some of them are pretty easy. This is a simple quest right now. Open five wish orbs. That's really, really easy. I could use shards. I could spend 250 shards to get five common wish orbs and instantly complete that quest, and probably get more than 250 shards back from the chest. Um, but obviously, you can also just get wish orbs manually. Ghost Bloom's not that hard. Uh, some of them are a bit harder, like this one, winning one game on Popple difficulty for placing allies. Uh, and then there's other easy ones in the bronze quest. But honestly, you just choose the ones that you think you're going to easily be able to do. Win one game on the Bloom Beacon map at extreme difficulty. Some of them specifically call out the Bloom Beacon map, which means you can, like, very easily um, do both at the same time, which is obviously super helpful. Uh, there's a wide variety of quests, you just gotta know which ones are easier to do, which if you don't find that obvious, you'll learn pretty quickly. Uh, tip, the wish orb one, always take the wish orb one, whether it be bronze, silver, whatever, five, three, you really want it, because it's super easy, and yeah. Uh, these actually give rewards just like if you beat a map for the first time on that difficulty. If you beat an extreme game on a map, or extreme map, not extreme map, Extreme difficulty on a map for the first time, you get a golden chest. You also get a golden chest if you pop 500 ghost balloons. So, yeah, it's it's pretty good. Uh, it's one of the best sources of a wide variety of things. Gems, wish orbs, uh, wish orbs less so, but definitely gems and gold, as well as 100% character items, because I believe in poppable chests, so the diamond ones get four character items. Extreme three, uh, silver two, and bronze one. Which, again, adds up. You can't double these, but even still, it's pretty significant. Uh, you get some as you level up. I believe you start with one, and you get a second at level 10, a third at level 20, a fourth at level 30, and a fifth at level 50. I believe that's how it works. Uh, but yeah, so it kind of rewards you for leveling up, but they're super great, because even just with one quest slot, very helpful. Uh, once you complete a quest, you can't do another one for 24 hours, but... Even still, I definitely recommend if you are planning on playing the game just once or twice a day, um, if you are trying to grind for characters, do a Bloom Beacon, set up all your quests, try to pick quests you think you can easily do all at once in the Bloom Beacon, do as many as you can in the Bloom Beacon, you'll probably get like 12, 15 character items depending on what you're doing. Super duper helpful, obviously super great. Uh, next thing I actually have to talk about is the investigation events, uh, legendary wish orb sort of. So these events actually can give you character items, I believe, but it's rather rare and normally not in all that large quantities. Uh, but that's where the legendary wish orb comes in. So most people are pretty disappointed when they get character items from it. 
usually for good reason, um, but it's actually a really great source of them. Although the events can take a while to get and to play through and you do have to grind a fair bit. Uh, tip, by the way, or I don't know what I'm saying, tip there. Uh, you can definitely also do quests while trying to complete these events. I've definitely done that as well. Uh, super efficient ways of doing things. Uh, because you actually also get legendary or diamond chest equivalents uh, for this map, which will also give character items. So, if you've beaten a lot of maps, you don't have any new maps to play, play these. Uh, super helpful. Because yes, if you didn't know, replaying a map on the same difficulty without a bloom beacon or anything, um, you won't get character items anymore. You'll just get a small amount of gold and XP and maybe a wishel, but I don't think so. Uh, Legendary Wishel, though, it will give a, I believe, 20 Cosmic Essence is one of the drops, or it can give 40 of every single different character item individually. Uh, super helpful. If you get the option and you don't get a good Legendary, you should probably pick it. It's a big deal. It will help you out a ton. Um, okay, a few other things to go over. Martian Games, this is one I'd say it's rarely worth it. I don't believe this is ever worth it unless you have every Martian Game thing, which if you do, that's ridiculous, you're incredible, that's awesome, good for you. Um, but in general, the Martian games, they're really expensive. So you generally have uh, 20 character items for 10,000, 15 Cosmic Essence, or I believe sometimes 50 character items for 25,000, and then 100 Cosmic Essence or 200 of a character item for 75,000 if you have a premium character. That's the only way you can get this, I believe. Uh, but yeah, so obviously, this is a lot, 100 Cosmic Essence is a ton. But 75,000 Martian Gems is like, I don't know, probably like 50 Martian games you'd have to play through for a significant amount of time. So, yeah, that that's a lot of work, and you can get that fairly easily by other means. It's not a terrible option, again, uh, but it's definitely not the best, and I'd probably recommend you don't do it if you don't have every single Martian thing unlocked, because the Martian stuff, that's the only way to get it, character items many other ways, as I've sort of just shown you. Uh, going back to actual normal games, I need to find a map and beat them everything on, maybe you. Um, but yes, going back to actual maps, I did briefly go over this, I believe, but every single map tier, so bronze gives you a bronze chest, which gives you one character item, uh, hard silver, which gives two, extreme gold, which three, and diamond for a popple, which gives four. And then there's the adventure crest chest, which are different. I believe the bronze adventure chest crest gives you two, Silver gives you four, gold gives you six, and diamond gives you eight. I could be wrong though. Uh, heads up, eight, the diamond chest, the impoppable chest for the adventure crest chest, which is these big ones down here, also gives you a guaranteed epic wish orb. So, yeah, if you're struggling to get epic wish orbs and you can be an impoppable on the really easy maps because they're really, really easy, uh, do it because you'll get some pretty early, pretty easy to get epic wish orbs. Uh, but yeah, I think that's honestly just about it as far as character upgrades go, or as far as, like, getting the items you need to upgrade characters. I don't have the exact numbers on how much you need for each level, uh, but you can easily look that up on the wiki, that's not really my job to tell you there. Um, plus, not to mention, it's not that important, because you'll find out eventually. <laughs> um, what else, what else did I have to say? Quite quick thing about what characters to upgrade. So, for most characters, there's only one item, actually, is that for most? I think it's for most. So, for Sam, Psy, Flame Princess, Ice King, um, C4 Charlie, and... Is that it? Yes, yeah, so... Flame Princess, Ice King, Super Monkey, Psy, Sam, C4 Charlie, all six of those characters. Just upgrade them as soon as you can. No reason to save their item, there's no one else that uses them. And then you have the other characters. So, obviously, if you don't have premium characters, I'd recommend keep upgrading Jake, Finn, slash, and Marcelin, rather. Uh, just upgrade them as soon as possible, unless you think you're going to buy the premium characters or you're getting close to buying them with Martian Gems. There's no reason to save straight away. Obviously, premium characters, a better use of your character items if you have them. Uh, but otherwise, just keep upgrading Jake, Marcelin, and Finn. Uh, then we have PB and Warrior PB. What I'd probably say is, as far as Warrior PB goes, don't upgrade her until PB's level 7 at the very least. <laughs> Uh, PB's level 7 ability is absurdly powerful. Her level 5 is a solid money-making upgrade. She's just all around incredible. Her level 3 upgrade, bunch more allies, which can work well. With Lemon Hopes and Gumball, Princess Bubblegum is so much more powerful than Warrior PB. Warrior PB, her best upgrade, you get straight away, just born to rule. Everything else ain't that great. Don't upgrade Warrior PB. 
PB is way more better. I thought Warrior PB was really strong. I got it to level 7 first, my PB was like level 4. And then I realized, no, PB is significantly better. And because of that, although all my characters are even level, which in part is because I wanted to get all of the level 7 abilities, uh, I, it's not worth it. Don't upgrade Warrior PB. PB is so much better. Um, then we have Captain Cassie and Commander Cassie. So Captain Cassie, kind of interesting. Her level 7 ability, Morb Takedown, can stun bad balloons, which is super useful. She also has a secret upgrade uh, with Super Monkey, which can generate a lot of money. She's pretty decent DPS. She's one of the other characters that can have uh, more, if not that that's necessarily all that important. Uh, but she definitely is a decent character. But having said that, I'd still say Commander Cassie is generally more useful. Uh, though in this case, it's more up to you. They're both very useful towers. Commander Cassie, I'd say, is better. Um, but there's nothing wrong with trying to get both of them to level 7. Both the level 7 upgrades are very useful. Um, Commander Cassie's is... I don't know if I want to say less useful. Captain Cassie's is just a very good utility. Because she and Jake are the only ones that can install bad balloons. Um, but just do with that information as you will. That's really the only main reason to upgrade her. Beyond that, Commander Cassie's often better. Uh, then we have Max and Juggernaut Max. So this is an interesting one. Both of them aren't that great. Uh, Max is level 7 ability, absolute useless, it's just, it's really bad. It doesn't get damage buffs, so it really sucks. Uh, his level 5 is insane, so you want to get Max to level 5. He really kind of sucks until he's level 5. Uh, but once you get a level 5 uh, Juggernaut Max, then Max is probably more important. Uh, though in general, Max also, you really just want level 3. Level 5 is not that important, and his level 7 is generally worse than his base ability, so... Yeah, it doesn't really matter who you upgrade. Both of them, you really want... Well, Max, you really want to get to level 3, which is obviously pretty easy. Uh, Juggernaut Max, you definitely want to get to level 5 as fast as possible. Beyond that, none of them are that great. It's really up to you. It's not that important in the slightest. They're just pretty basic characters, all things considered. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. As far as using Cosmic Essence goes, I forgot to mention that. Cosmic Essence, if you don't know what it is, which... You hopefully do, but if you don't, because I'm talking about it a lot. Uh, as you can see in the bottom, or not bottom left, in the left here, co use Cosmic Essence. Uh, you can use it to fill in any character's character item. It's super useful because of that, obviously. Uh, but ge generally speaking, you will get less Cosmic Essence than specific character items because it has that feature, so we gotta watch out for that. Uh, it's really just, in my opinion, save it if there's an upgrade you really want to focus on for a character. Use all your cos- no, save all your Cosmic Essence until you know that if you use all of it, you get that character to that level, and then use all your Cosmic Essence. That's basically what I've done. Currently, I'm saving from my level 10 Super Monkey, which is the max level. That's kind of important. Uh, all levels give certain buffs to characters as well. Uh, level 10s give massive buffs. I don't know if I need to mention that, but I feel like I probably should. And uh, with that, I think that's just about it for today. Uh, obviously, I do- I did sort of mention this, but just going back to it, every character does have- uh, an upgrade they unlock at level 3, 5, and 7. Generally level 7 is an ability, sometimes level 5 is, as you can see here. Level 3 is generally an upgrade. I don't believe level 3 is ever an ability. Uh, who is there possible that level 3 is an ability? I believe Psy level 5 is the ability. Yeah, so often level 5 or 7 is the ability uh, which for a tower, which is generally very powerful. Um, level 3 is often just a very useful upgrade, though sometimes it's kind of useless. It depends on the character. Uh, but that definitely is a fairly important feature to know about because those star bonuses level 3, 5, and 7 are probably the most important levels as those upgrades can often, or abilities, are often the main power spikes for a character and makes them significantly stronger, especially in PB's case. Seriously, don't upgrade Warrior PB. Huge mistake on my part. Um, but yeah, I think that's just about it. If you guys think I left anything out, please leave a comment. I will make sure it gets added to the description or something. Um, Please let me know if you guys still have any questions. Feel free to give the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to join the Purple Elephant Squad. We're on our way to 5,000, which is kind of crazy. Um, and yeah, just have a wonderful day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye!